everybody. I hope my camera will stay here. But I have been a truth seeker for over 30 years. And not long into my quest of truth seeking, I met truth himself, Jesus Christ, who is the way, the truth, and the life. The one who was um, made flesh, came to earth, um, lived a sinless life, died, resurrected, went to sit at the right hand of the Father and said that when he did that, he would send the Holy Spirit to us, to be in us and with us, and um, and who is the revealer of truth. The scripture says that the Holy Spirit reveals God to us, and that, in fact, we can't know um, him without the Holy Spirit doing that. So in my quest for truth and my meeting him in that quest, um, I developed a passion to share that with other people so that they can know this truth too. Once God proved himself to me, um, you know, of course, um, I began to understand that the gospel was true. And so when God says that, you know, go tell, how can they know unless they hear and how can they hear unless a preacher sent? Um, that gave me the inspiration, the fire to spread that message because that's how I heard it. That's how I came to know God and it's life changing and it gets better every day. So in the midst of this passion, I developed a passion to encourage people to read their Bibles because there's no better way to get to know the Lord than through his word. Now, yes, we know him personally through the Holy Spirit, and he speaks in multiple and varied ways, which is a topic of another teaching. But in this little short um, broadcast, I'm actually waiting to, to go somewhere. I'm waiting for someone to call me. Hopefully it won't interrupt the broadcast. It'll have to get sent to the circular file if it does. But in this, I wanted to just hop on real quick and share this thought. Um, so in so doing, I have... Um, provoked Bible reading through the One Year Bible and through other uh, forms of Bible teaching, and one of which is to look at the books of the Bible one book at a time. And so um, one of the best places to start reading your Bible is in the book of Psalms. And so I have here, I'm going to read just a little introduction to the book of Psalms. I have the, the complete Jewish Bible by, um, hang on, hang on, looks like Messianic. Jewish Publishers and Resources, and I'm just going to read the little introduction to Psalms just to kind of give you a, some knowledge and a thirst for reading it. This is an awesome book, this book of Psalms. So it says, Introduction to Tehillim, Psalms. I don't know if I said that right. Te Tehillah, I think, means praise. Um, you can look that up. But it says, The Psalms, titled The Book of Praises by the Jews, are songs and prayers put to music and accompanied by various stringed instruments. The book of Psalms may have had a final editor, but it is not contributed to a single author. It appears to comprise several collections of songs to which multiple authors contributed. Some of the Psalms have a subscription, which does not refer to a person. Thirty-four Psalms are without any type of superscription. Even if the superstitions did not originate with the author, they are nevertheless quite ancient. The superscriptions vary in the type of information they contain. Some contain the name of the author or the name of the collection. Some include the type of psalm. Some contain liturgical or musical notations. And some a brief indication of the occasion of the psalm. Many of the superscriptions include information about the musical activity of the psalm. The term Selah is found in 39 psalms, but its function is difficult to determine. See, I didn't know that. I had heard it meant like stop and think about it or pause, and it may. Um, but it says the differing sub superscriptions heading many of the psalms indicate that various types of psalms were written. The major classifications scholars recognize, including psalms of lament, either personal or communal, a thanksgiving psalm, a psalm of praise, creation psalms, psalms of trust, petition or prayer, um, wisdom psalms, imprecatory psalms, penitent psalms, doxologies. Often classifications overlap and one psalm may evidence several of these categories. 
collected over several centuries, the Psalms were most likely compiled into the book's final edition after the Babylonian captivity. Well, that makes sense. But before the closing of the Old Testament canon, the book of Psalms appears in Hebrew scriptures in the first book of the Ketuvim, or writings, when referenced in the New Testament and other works, often represents the Ketuvim, forgive me if I'm not pronouncing that right, section of the Tanakh, which is the Old Testament. The book of Psalms reveals how God works in the inner life of his people. Its themes range from praise to lament, war to peace, jubilation to judgment. The Psalms pleas for God's deliverance, their impassioned cries for his vengeance, and their delight in his salvation seen and promised, all illustrate what it means to be after God's own heart. 1 Samuel thirteen fourteen. So there you have it. It has an outline of five sections, deliverance songs, divine judgments, national hymns of Yehuda, God's great kingdom, and songs of praise and thanksgiving. But what you'll find in here is uh, you'll find the Lord and you'll find him for your life personally. If you'll ask the Holy Spirit to come alongside you and show you this word and give you instruction and knowledge and wisdom and understanding about your life, your family, your job, he'll do it. So I just want to encourage you today, get a Bible, open it up to the book of Psalms and start reading. Make notes on it, write it on little cards and memorize it. Your life will never be the same. God bless you. Have an amazing day.